This hurricane season was forecast to be a rough one, especially for those of us who watch storms come in out of the Gulf and change our lives. It's been unusually quiet. Has it been rough yet? State climatologist Barry Kime is here. Also, uh, coastal meteorologist Paul Miller to discuss why, and we'll get to that in a moment. First, I want to ask you about Fiona. Fiona is a hurricane, Cat 1, that just hit Puerto Rico, devastating Puerto Rico, being compared to the monster storm Maria of a few years ago. Why is a Cat 1 being compared to a much more powerful storm? I mean, in a nutshell, it's the rainfall. This, uh, every, every hurricane has its signature, you know, whether it's surge or high winds, this one's rain. And uh, you know, the 30 plus inches of rain is really what the, the big problem is. And, and they're still recovering from the last one, from Maria. And this has just set them that much further back. True, I mean, they have made some progress, not so much apparently with their power, power grid, which seemed to be knocked out before the storm even came um, ashore. Uh, but 33 inches of rain in Ponce, uh, a large city, um, and this is an area that doesn't get the typical rain, Paul, that it would get for, you think of Puerto Rico tropical? Yeah, you think Puerto Rico tropical island, but actually the southern side of the island is really in what we call a rain shadow, where it's kind of on the downwind side of the mountain and it tends to be a bit drier. Due to the wind directions we've seen based on the track of Hurricane Fiona, that side of the island has actually seen a lot of onshore flow that's been forced upwards by these mountains, okay. and that's really enhanced these rainfall rates that we've seen. So that storm has became a cat form and moved on, um, but not threatening the U.S. mainland. But what is the takeaway from this Fiona, for example, 30 inches and not lingering, um, 30 inches of rain, not lingering. Is that something for us to be aware of? Uh, eventually, a storm will come into the Gulf and it could be at any time. Um, but is that just one of those things that the data is showing um, in the bigger picture of climate changing? Rain is falling at a greater intensity per minute. Yeah. I believe that's correct. So this is a good example of that, I think, right? Uh, possibly, yes. I mean, we've had some of these amazing storms like Harvey. We had our August 2016 flood here, which right. is also a tropical event, depending on how you want to look at it. And uh, the atmosphere, since it is warming, is carrying more moisture. And as a result, when these big rainstorms fall, there's just mo there's a greater reservoir of moisture there to tap into and we're getting higher rainfall amounts. You mentioned the atmosphere. So we've not had uh, really much in the Gulf at all this uh, hurricane season so far. Still plenty of time left, but why? What's changed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, during the month of July, we had a lot of this Saharan dust. And so that really kind of shut off the valve for hurricane season early on. And how is that? Why, why does it do that? It's, it's drier, it, it uh, infiltrates into the atmosphere and it can do that yeah well du dust like, comes from a desert like right? a, like, a, <laughs> like a sedative it just calms it right mm -hmm. yeah it's it, basically it puts a lot of hot dry air aloft in the atmosphere okay. thunderstorms don't like that one bit. Sure. they love the humidity the kind of stuff we have here in louisiana i thought that, that hot, dry was air. gone though i thought the dust was gone mm -hmm. yeah but, well so essentially what that that has done is is created an atmospheric profile that is very stable okay. and even though the dust has moved on this, this temperature profile in the atmosphere is just not allowing the uplift to take place that's required for a hurricane to form. Going forward, is there any way for us to like bottle that and make sure <laughs> we have that every year? That would be nice, yeah. yeah. yeah unfortunately, these are some, some large scale powers. Uh, you know, Mother Nature will, 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 will send at us. And of course, this was a little wrinkle. Just when you think we, ha or we, think we have the atmosphere under control and we right. can do this long range forecasting, Mother Nature will throw this wrinkle in there sure. and, and screw everything up. And we're just past peak, but still in a dangerous part of a busy, typically hurricane season when things can happen and things can still happen. And we need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really kind of early in the third quarter of hurricane season. Okay. And so we still have about maybe a third of the peak season ahead of us. Um, and so the Gulf is, needs to still be on alert. So we have been thinking, you know, about six storms in the Gulf. Uh, it's maybe going to be uh, a long shot to get to that number. But, you know, even average is 3.7. And so I still think that uh, there might be a temptation to kind of say, oh, this season's a bust. But we still have, yeah. we still have several weeks to it, go. It only takes one, right? Mm -hmm. That's and then, right. then you don't remember that there weren't others. That's, that's correct. <laughs> Paul Berry, thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure.
and interest in the Gulf are watching a tropical depression now. It's in the Caribbean, north of Colombia. It's expected to become Hurricane Hermine and make its way into the Gulf early next week. The National Hurricane Center says the storm should cross Cuba, then threaten Florida as a Cat 3 major hurricane.